Hello everyone, it's Patrick here. I'm going to be making a video series on how to make your own skis. And uh, what I'm showing here in the video is the first template for making my own skis because you have to make a ski press, which is probably the most important element of making your own skis. I'm using the clamping method to make them. And when making your template, make sure to incorporate an extra centimeter or so for any sag in the glue. So if you want your skis half an inch off the ground because you're making a cambered set of skis like I am, then you want your middle point that is raised off the ground to be about a centimeter and the half inch off the ground because your skis will sag a centimeter when they're taken out of the press. The first step to making your own ski press is having several strips of the same width to accommodate the press. You'll get what I mean in a second. Okay, when you have all your strips cut out that are the same width as the template piece, you're going to want to drill a bunch of holes through your template piece in order to attach them to the other pieces. This is very important because this is what you're going to have your router with a flush trim bit follow. Okay, now that I have pre-drilled all the holes, what I'm going to do next is attach my template to one of my strips, and then I'm going to repeat this all the way down the line until I've made eight equal pieces to my template. Once I've attached my template, I sketch a line and copy that line with my jigsaw, making sure to leave a little material there later so I can flush trim it with my router. I don't have any footage of flush trimming with the router, however, it's as simple as any other flush trimming job would go, and it makes eight pieces that are equal to your template. Everything has to be equal, because then it makes it a lot easier in the long run. Okay, so uh, these pieces may look different than they are from the earlier clip, and that is true. It's because uh, my dad actually got me access to a CNC machine, and that made it a lot easier to cut out all the pieces and the respective counterparts. So I went ahead and how often and used that because how often are you going to get a CNC machine to use? And since it was free, I just went ahead and did that. But the same process applies. Once you have eight of your template made, this is the place you'll be. You just have to glue them all together. What I'm doing on the ends with those clamps is I'm making two pieces exactly the width of my uh, template. That way my template is always square and I'm using four inch screws and that impact driver is going to save you a lot of trouble and I pre-drove it. I refilled that little glue bottle a load of times and basically what I did was I spread the glue and put the, all the pieces together and then I'll bring you to the next section when I'm doing the top. The next step in the process, after you've glued all your pieces, is to screw them together. I'm using 4 inch drywall screws here and the first thing I'm going to do is pre-drill all the holes as I'm doing right now and then I'm going to fasten it together with four inch screws from each side. The way I did this was kind of like a zipper pattern where on one side if there was two holes I'd put on the other side one hole in between those two. And this worked really well as a clamping method since I did not have enough clamps to clamp this together. So if you don't have a lot of clamps I strongly suggest using screws and a drill. The next step in the process is taking a power sander or hand sander if you want, I suggest power sander, and smoothing out both pieces. The press piece which is on top and it's just the counter curve for the piece you made earlier with your template. That's all you have to do and then once that's done you're almost done. The next step in the process was 
Since my press piece I cut a little thin on the edges, I needed to apply another plate on the back. So what I'm doing here is gluing on a piece of plywood from my scrap pile and that's all I really did. I just made sure it was even from both edges as well, which was very important. This step isn't 100% necessary, but I strongly suggest it. What I'm doing here is I'm taking clear packing tape and covering up the top of both my press piece and the top piece. And this will allow for the epoxy used to glue your skis together to not stick to the press whatsoever. And this is really just a lifesaver so you don't have a newly made ski stuck in the middle of your press. And here we have the completed ski press, fitted with the top piece and the bottom piece both taped up, and that back plate is just to prevent any sort of breakage. I'm really excited to make some skis. I'm all set with this video, and in the next video I'll be covering the materials you need to make your own skis, and I'll show you where to get them and some good sources for them. That is it, and uh, thank you for watching.